did we choose specifically to come in now for this game, for this party, and are we the light workers, and what does that mean? In this new energy, if and when you reincarnate, you're never going to have to learn what you've learned this time. In other words, we are now on new cycles. Instead of history repeating itself, we're on a new track. There is no repeat because they say the system is a system and it simply doesn't change. Yes, it does. And what changes it is us. As we then go into, I say, a higher consciousness, we are rewriting the rules of ourselves. That is where the answers are going to be found. All of those answers are within you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you ever wanted to know what's going on with the world and hear it from a higher power, then do we have the Cry and Lee Carroll show for you. Today I'll be talking with Lee Carroll and the higher power known as Cryan, who has come through Lee since 1989 and even spoken before the UN seven times. Today I want to know why we're here, what's going on right now, what's the energy we're going through, and what it means for us, our ascension, and even planet Earth. That plus we'll talk about light workers and lighthouses, hiding in plain sight, what on earth is a super soul, and what in the world watches, glasses, and channeling has to do with anything. So welcome to the show, Monica Lee, and somewhere in the ethos, Cryon. Are you ready to shine? Yay. We are ha. shining. Oh, is, shall I do that? Is woohoo okay now? A woohoo is, is, is recommended at any point you would like. <laughs> but but leading the witness since I wasn't planning on going there for the first question but I got such a good response off camera before we dive right into things forgive me for asking but is this the end of the world as we know it I you know it is yes it is that's absolutely it is it is and that's the cue is was as we know it mm-hmm. yes not only that it's not unexpected I I've, I've been doing this work for 32 years and when I started this, this was the subject. In other words, the first book of 14 I wrote, the first book, the smallest book, the most controversial one was called The End Times. And it is not the end times, it's the end of an old time and the beginning of a new time. And that was actually stated prompting in the first chapter was that you're not going to have a Mar- an Armageddon, but it's going to be a shift that is going to change everything you ever thought you knew. And so, yeah. REM got it right. The end of the world as we know it. So then, I'm, I'm curious about this shift. In fact, I, I heard one of your sessions where you're channeling Cryon. It's talking about the, the shift happens, but not in the way we think. So if we looked into the future, if you had a futurist, for instance, somebody who said, here's what's happening. You're going to have financial class. Uh, the, the stock market's going to go down. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. Cryon would say it has happened, but in a different way, because time is not linear. Oh, yeah. There's, um, there are all kinds of answers to this, but and the one that I like the best um, is the parable of the factory. And I'll just give this to you, because that was given even before, um, I w- right at the beginning, I think, of COVID, which was the explanation that Cryon was giving for why COVID was needed and right on schedule. Uh, he gave a parable in a channel about a factory, and the factory was producing uh, goods um, that we, we, we had to, to have. You could not stop the factory. To stop the factory would be uh, uh, suddenly people would starve, you know, so one of these things. And so here comes the factory, and it's been going and going for years and years and years. And the management is really um, of this factory is aware that there's something wrong because the, the, the employees keep coming to him and saying, you know, there's there's dysfunction over here. We could do a much better job over here. We keep making dysfunctional stuff because we can't retool. And he says, don't change anything. We can't stop the factory. And then somebody else comes and says, you know, there's corruption in here. They're stealing a lot of money over here. Not only that, that this guy's he hasn't come to work for three or four weeks and nobody's noticing it, you know. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And then suddenly the factory stops. And the factory stops because, let's say, COVID, all right? And that's exactly what happened, is that everything stopped, And as, as you know. And in that stop, 
you can retool. You can get rid of the guys who, who are doing the wrong thing. You can clean up the corruption. But the factory had to stop fully before you could attack or change systemic problems. We were never able to, to solve these things. So we have a stopped factory, and we're in the middle of that stop at the moment. We haven't seen what's coming. And that's where Crian talks about, you, you're going to look back at this and go, oh, because what's coming is going to be something we didn't expect. And that is a higher consciousness, a cleanup of the factory. Crian says it's the year uh, or two of revelation. We're going to have things revealed to us that we did not expect that are going to make us angry. Uh, Crian says it may be the fall of big inappropriate pharma. I mean, here it goes. So we are looking at something that Crian has said. <laughs> along with a kitty. I know, along with a yes. kitty. That Crian has, has said four years was the potential. And that's just, I haven't even talked about the shift yet. So that is actually, you know, the explanation of what we are going through right now. Um, so I, I always tell people that, that we are looking at a rejuvenation. Uh, folks, this is not the end of the end. This is not the negative stuff is not coming. Uh, you're in it. We're we're looking at uh, really dark stuff right now, and it's going to do nothing but get lighter. You'll see. In fact, there's already evidence. When you ask me, you'll say, Lee, what is the evidence we have a higher consciousness? Uh, and I'll say, thank you, Michael, and I'll answer that one, but right now, not. <laughs> <laughs> so many directions we can go with this. So, the first one, um, you've had astrologist on, I've had astrologist on. Uh, Dr. Michael Lennox, who we had on the show recently, he talked about us getting a little bit of a pause in 2022 into halfway through 2023 before things ripe, r ramp right back up. Has Cryon given an idea of how soon we're going to be thrown into the real thick of it again? And how do we wrap our minds around you have almost, forgive me, a celebratory tone, not a celebratory tone to the chaos, but going, thankfully, finally, things are going to change. We are going to ascend. Consciousness is going to rise to an even higher level. When is the next step happening? Brian has always said that the timing is up to us. I love the um, astrology because I believe in it. And I also think it uh, it, por it portrays... Um, Astrology is like a road and uh, where the bumps are, where the bumps clear and all to, to help us to, to know whether to pull back or to move forward. And I believe, as I say very strongly, that is a very good timing. Uh, Crian has not given that timing, but normally the astrologists are right um, on these things. So I would say, unfortunately, that's a good one. Uh, 23 um, or the beginning of 24. I would say middle of 23 sounds awfully good to me. <laughs> and you're right. The, that's, the astrology says that's kind of looks like that's what is going to happen. Thank you. So let's play with a few fun key words here. Rejuvenation. Because we're talking about, you said a year or two of revelation and rejuvenation. And what I'm hearing right now from people is exhaustion. How do all of these coexist? Well, one at a time, hopefully. <laughs> right now is, I would say, definitely uh, the darkest part. Um, maybe now and in the, ne in, the, in the next half a year or so, because we are looking at things we did never expected. And we could start listing them. But the worst of, is um, a complete and total disruption <clears throat> of the earth of communication, of travel, um, of economy. Is there anything that would have caused this besides a world war? And the answer is no. So what we're looking for, looking at, and, and thank you, God, is we did not have a war, but we have almost all of the attributes of it except the destruction. So this is a very, very difficult time. So we are in the, we are in the midst, I think, of the lowest, almost of the low. It's going to get better. And when it starts to get better, part of the starting to get better will be the uh, rejuvenation is a great word because it rejuvenates our hope. It rejuvenates all the parts of us that say, OK, look, I never thought. Uh, there would there there would be hope for my country. I never thought there'd be hope for uh, the economy. I never thought that that uh, politicians would be would would turn around this way or whatever. There's going to be so many new kinds of paradigms that they're going to come at us 
in a, from right and left. And the thing that we're going to see, according to what Krein has said, and for years and years, is the turnaround is going to be with integrity. We're going to have, there's going to be a lot more compassion. There already is. And when you, again, when you start asking me what's, what, what has already happened that nobody's really thinking about because we're just too consumed with where we are, I will give that to you. But there's already indications of the kinds of things that are coming as we start to sort out the multiple layers of the problems with our society, with biases, with, with all manner of things that right now we're dealing with. That unfortunately makes a lot of sense. Um, with that said, and and uh, I, yeah, I don't even know where to go with that because I'm so protective of wifey with baby on board. But I I get what you're saying. Notwithstanding where this may have come from, and I've heard Cryan speak about this. Why? Now, so Cryon has, has spoken before you, or spoken through you since 1989. You talk about 2012 and this being a shift. Uh, I, in fact, we probably get to go to what was the shift that took place in 2012. But why now? Why, what has been the impetus for you guys are ready or it's time? I think because we collectively made the choice that we wanted to move towards uh, ascension rather than destruction. And with that collective choice, it set up a whole chain of events. And I like you mentioned 2012, but I want to just explain that the 2012 event, it's actually part of what is called the precession of the equinox. And this event is a 36 year event. It's not something that just happens in 2012. 2012 is the midpoint of that 36 year window when the earth is precessing. And we have 18 years out from 2012 before that precession of the equinox event is over. And so we still have uh, just less than 10 years to go to move through this potent time for change. This is something that the ancients have predicted. It's viewable in the calendars from the Mayans. They had calendars out to the year 4000 and beyond. And what they talked about was that once we made it past 2012, if we were to choose to go onto that path, we would start seeing the highest consciousness that the planet has ever seen happen. And why I love to talk about the Indigenous prophecies and the ancients is that many of them are in a world where they understand we are part of a cycle, that we move in cycles, and that we are part of a system known as reincarnation. Now, I know that may, there may be some already watching this that are not quite sure if they believe in reincarnation. But I want to just ask if it is a possibility that we could come as a soul onto the earth, having many expressions of life, and that the more times we come and do that, the more wisdom we gain. And that's, Crian talks about old souls and how what the old souls do is to bring light onto the planet. And that's what's needed more than ever because light is infectious, it's contagious, and you get to that tipping point where you have more light than dark. What's dark? Dark is just the absence of light. And so we are in extraordinary times where we've got that tipping point. We have more light on the planet than ever before. But instead of this kind of, oh, angels are going to come down and make everything beautiful. It doesn't work that way. What happens is that the light is showing and now you're seeing what's always been there. You can judge uh, consciousness of cultures by looking at how they treat women and children and animals. That's a real simple litmus test. And how long have issues like what the Me Too movement highlighted been going on forever but now 
there is an energy behind when the light exposes it to do something about it. And so that is what is happening now. There is light exposing things so that we can do something about it. I I like to think of our earth is a planet going under construction right now. And how many people have had their homes being renovated? It's the most uncomfortable, exhausting, longer than it thought it would ever take process. Twice as long, twice as expensive. Exactly. Like renovating a house. Yeah. So that's if you kind of look at the earth right now and all the uh, areas, uh, political health, all of those areas are like the rooms in your house and they're all under deconstruction now. There's something else too that is uh, underlying a lot of these things is what we perceive And as a group of people, even watching now, what we expect. And we are cynical people because the the way things work, they've always worked that way. We have a situation where you might have heard history repeats itself. And so why should, you know, we come out of this any better than we went in? And people will say, well, it's just going to go right back to the way it was and maybe even worse because of the things that have happened have, you know, have not helped us. And so uh, I want to address that. It was um, Greg Braden, I think, who wrote a book about time. And he showed that there's actually a mathematical relationship about why time would repeat. And he's right. And he has lots of dates in the book and all that to show things that have happened again and again, especially the timing of wars. Uh, It's really fascinating to see this, uh, all of his research. And and he's one of my good friends, Greg Braden. But what he showed was that past this perception of of, uh, perception of the equinox, equinox, procession of the equinox, that it all starts to change. In other words, we are now on new cycles. And so right now, instead of history repeating itself, we're on a new track. There is no repeat. And I loved that. So don't expect what has happened in the past to then shape your future. And I think that is great news because we all expect that. I expect that. I mean, I have to catch myself. Um, You know, how many times do things have to happen a certain way before you say to yourself, well, that's going to happen again? So we're we're not... I don't blame anybody for that. I'd say that's just like the way we think. But but Greg was saying, and Crying has said, this is the this particular cycle change mm-hmm. that the indigenous saw, that all that the that the earth is part of is new. And that is real new. We get to start over, you might say. Is that because of a choice that we have made? And if so, how what is the evidence of this choice. So I've, I've had on many times an, another one of, of my dear friends, Dr. Irvin Laszlo, and a and, uh, n- couple time Nobel Peace Prize nominee, among other things. I'm, I'm sure, sure you know of him. And he talks about humanity is at a bifurcation, a split. We can go A, we can go B. And every indication that I have is that we have chosen not to jump off the cliff, not to be the proverbial lemur. What's the indica- what are the indications you're getting? Uh, our futurist friend, John Peterson, has the same kind of thing. And he does, what he studies is how will the future look compared to what the past has done and all the indicators that are there. And there's like many, many, many indicators, and it's his job as a futurist to tell uh, what is going to happen. Now, when I say his job, because the <laughs> government employs uh, people like him <laughs> to make that very, very thing, because they also want to know how to prepare for what's coming. Yeah. And all of the indicators would indicate that this is different, that it's not going to be B, it's not going to be back to doom and gloom, and it's not going to get worse. The, the indicators are for systemic change. And if you don't know what that is, and if people are asking about that, that is at the very source of the way things work. Now, since you've asked me, um, Monica's already begun. Take a look at it just, just two things that have been with us for hundreds and hundreds of years that have no integrity, uh, that are really horrific, that have started to change right now in our, in our society. Number one, the Me Too movement. Now, ladies, Uh, Everybody, look at this with me for just a moment. You'll say, oh, it's great. We're starting to look at this. No, it's more than great. Do you realize that this has been the way of it? 
forever. Uh, it's in my father's world, my grandfather's world, his grandfather's world. It never got better. We always had the suppression of women in this society for over 200 years. It's just the way it is. And suddenly it's blown open. Whistleblowers are being listened to. They're being believed. Um, um, law is is involved finally, and they're not stuffing it under the under the you know curtain the mattress. Yeah. It changed. Now l- let me ask you, what is it that caused that? And I will tell you that that is the example of an increase in consciousness. So people are starting to think more compassionately. They want to look at it in a better way. They want to clean it up. And that's everybody. That's law enforcement. That's that's any, that's our whole society looking at it and going, for the first time, that isn't right. Let's do something about it. Like, bingo. That's new. Really, really new. I'll give you another one. How long, and please don't send me letters, how long have priests been abusing, abusing kids? You want to just uh, want to count it out with me? And the answer is probably from the beginning of the church. They, they made a really interesting decision, and that was to make the priest celibate, which is, um, I mean, how do you like it so far, guys? I mean, this is like, why would you do such a thing? First of all, the priests thought they should have been women because mothers do a lot better job with counseling and intuition and helping than men do. But that's their choice. And for all of these these years, we have had this abuse issue with little boys and a lot of the priests. And when I mean a lot, I mean in Pittsburgh, there were a thousand so cases. So what do you think worldwide? And what have they done about that in our lifetime? And the answer is to sweep it under the, the covers and the mattress. And even the popes were frustrated. They all knew. And they were just kept moving around. Suddenly, that changed. And what is it that changed it? We even, um, can I just tell you, uh, Cryon doesn't usually um, predict things because we are, we're our, our own, you know, people and timing. But Cryon said we would, uh, back in Texas, and I forgot when it was, he said we would get a new, new pope, pope soon. New pope. And we got one, and in 13 months later, we had a new pope, and the old one didn't die. Talk about that for a moment. I don't think that's happened before, maybe once or twice in in ancient history. But suddenly we had a real hiccup, an anomaly in everything. A pope didn't die. We got another pope. And that particular pope, Cryon says, is the reincarnation of Pope Francis. Not, not Pope Francis, but Francis of Assisi. And then that our pope now just even took Francis's name. And that's one of the reasons why. He's a renegade. And that's what Cryon said. He'd be a renegade pope, and he would start to do things that needed doing to save the church. Why did that happen? And here we go with him doing his best to acknowledge, first of all, acknowledge it. He had to swallow hard on that one. Uh, you know, the, the top of the priesthood, unfortunately, is abusing your kids, like gulp. And then start to do something about it. Now, whether it's been, you know, handled completely or not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a complete and total systemic change of that church. And we got to see that. Now, that's integrity. And that is finally somebody looked at it and go and went, so we've done this for how long? How many hundreds of years? And now it has stopped and changed. So so let, let me go from there. I'm going to kind of combine what Monica's saying and what you're saying here. Monica was saying that... Um, we are we are re- reincarnated, and and of course we're reincarnated. Energy never dies. Period. Done deal. End of story. Um, you're gonna come back, and you're gonna come back. Now, whether it's a choice or not, we we can go down that rabbit hole. But where I'm going with this and reincarnation is, did we choose specifically to come in now for this game, for this party, and are we the light workers? And what does that mean? We and- did, and I actually like to remind people that depending on your cycles of time we are part of at le- at the very least a two and a half thousand year plan here right now in this incarnation is part of a lineage of everything that has set you up for this moment I want to give you a phrase that cryon has given that has helped me so many times when I have been observing what is happening in our planet, 
Uh, the small amounts mm -hmm. where I look at the news, don't watch the news because they just give you fear stories and try and manipulate your emotions. But those moments when I have seen things that make me want to be the defender of universal truth and law, I've remembered this phrase from Cryon. And the phrase is this, truth will seek its highest level. Truth will seek its highest level. And that to me is something we can apply to our situation right now when we see things that scream injustice, scream lack of integrity, scream of discrimination. Just hold fast because truth will seek its highest level. When you give someone enough rope to hang themselves, it will eventually happen. And having that faith, that hope, it's what we expect. It's like what Lee said, what is our expectations? Mm -hmm with what mm -hmm. is going to happen. And so we are part of a 25,000 year plan. We elected to be here in this time of most potent change. And what is the one thing that's gonna get us through these most turbulent times? Well, it's the opposite of fear. Fear Thank is you. being in Thank you. peace, is having the vibration of our true authentic self, which is coming from the unified field of love, eternal. And if you have fear, that shuts down love eternal. It shuts down your natural state of being. It shuts down the ability to have peace. I'm talking eternal peace, the peace that is between the cells of your body. When you have that eternal peace, you can embrace mastery. What's mastery? Mastery observes. It doesn't react. And then it's able to give compassionate action to a situation. I call that the role of the mystic. And, and what you're describing is we have incarnated as mystics to remember who we are, to remember what we are. Going along those lines, Monica, there's a term that you use and that Cryon uses, which is to be a transmitter. And I believe this is kind of the higher level work of the light worker. And I want to hear what you have to say about this is as we begin to shift from that fear to that love, vibrating at a higher level or bringing more light, which we don't even have to deliberately bring to others, just bring to ourselves. We're pumping that into the system and into the earth, aren't we? The original parable that Cryon used where you have a, a dark room. Yeah. A lot of people are in the dark room and um, they're doing their best to live there, but they can't see well. <laughs> they can see their own um, family, their own immediate neighbors, but they can't see anybody else. And so that creates fear about, you know, what's out there and is somebody else going to come get them? Is somebody going to steal their resources? Uh, so they circle their wagons, as we say, and they live in that way. Now, that's my grandfather's world and his grandfather's world. That's why wars were there and all that. We just didn't see each other. Brian says all it takes is for one of those people to light a match in the dark room. You don't even know who lit it. But everybody sees a little better. And the first thing they see is each other. And they see in a way, oh, he does the same thing I do. Oh, he has the same family. He's got the same, and look, maybe we can, he's got some stuff that, and we got some stuff, maybe we can trade, you know. And this is what happens. So the whole idea of more light is that one. The more light we have, the more we can see each other. Now, one of the things that happened and has happened in these last 30 years to me, to all of us, is the Internet. And that, I don't think, was an accident. That's a new systemic paradigm. And that came with the precession of the equinoxes. And inventions are this way. They often come at the right time. They're given to us at the right time so that we can process the things that are in the future that Quran says that we are creating. And without the internet, I don't think that we would have been able to see each other. Crian says, when uh, there'll come a time when there can be no, no more secrets. 
and that is the internet. Because uh, <laughs> look at look at the trouble our government has on some of the most secretive things. There's, <laughs> you know, and they're on the internet the next day. <laughs> so people can't keep secrets. So and that is to our benefit, and that's also part of what's going to happen in these next months. So I want to I want to go to I want to take this in a completely different way. I'm using what you just said as a metaphor because it's fun to play with metaphors and cry and plays with metaphors and both of you play with metaphors. Not keep a secret. Are we coming through as upgraded souls? I believe the term was used super soul, where we no longer have secrets kept from up. We don't have to keep relearning and relearning and relearning our lessons, those secrets that we've forgotten. And instead, we're upgraded so that we can do the work that needs to be done. Thank you, Michael. This is an eye-rolling proposition for even metaphysicists, um, even for those who believe in reincarnation, because they say the system is a system and it simply doesn't change. Yes, it does. And what changes it is us. As we then go into, I say, a higher consciousness, we are rewriting the rules of ourselves and our lives and what we do here. And Krein has said, that is exactly right, that in this new energy, if, you, if and when you reincarnate, when you come back, you're never going to have to learn what you've learned this time. And that also will rewrite people's ideas if, if you're coming back. If you talk to a lot of people right now, they'll say, I've had it. Uh, I believe in reincarnation, but this is my last lifetime. I'm not coming back to this. And Krein says, oh, yes, you are. First of all, because what is it? how does it feel to come back being young again and, re and knowing you don't have to learn any of this stuff again? You will come back hitting the ground running. Now, there is a marginal example of this. Um, I'm a Hay House author. One of the uh, uh, best-selling books of Hay House in the year it was released is called The Indigo Children. Yes. I wrote that book and Thank two more. <laughs> and this is an examination of this exact thing, because these are new kids who are coming back differently. And what they're coming back with differently is they're a little wiser. Um, and, and the reason they're, that, that there's so much trouble in school, how would you like to go to school knowing some stuff that you, I mean, you, you know how numbers work, you know your number, your arithmetic and all, and here's a teacher going from scratch telling it to you. You're going to, you're going to be looking out the window, pulling the hair of the girl in front of you and all because you know it. And at some level, these children are wiser than we were and are ready and they hit the ground running in a way that that our education system is dumb 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 I would say dumbed down for them and so that's why there's so much trouble they are now adults so when when they first started coming in and they're still coming in and a lot of parents realize it my children are smarter than I was in different ways they're a little wiser about how things work so it's already started so this is this is what I tell people if they say where is the evidence? Uh, it's ev it's everywhere and it happens slowly, and so you're not going to see it like on the on the way you want to see it on the news uh, happening in a day. Also, I know you didn't ask this, and I, I'm going someplace, but Michael, there is something else that people should know. We this is this did not come from a channeler named Cryon. This came from the wisdom of the planet. It's been around a very long time. And we love to talk to indigenous and sit at their feet because of what they tell us. And it warms my heart and I giggle every time I do this. We were with Nicholas Picard in Peru um, and he was outlining what's happening. Uh, he's a Kiro tribe. He, he now speaks Spanish, but he's come down from the mountain, the Kiro uh, nation. And he sat down and he said, this is all about cycles. And he literally said the same thing I said to you when we started this program. He said there in his, his cycles that he believes that has been passed down from his traditions and his prophecies for thousands of years are what we are experiencing now. We didn't make this up. And so to listen to him talk and name the cycles we were in, we could identify exactly what he's saying. So if this is the time, we'll, we'll play with that a little bit, the eagle and condor coming together. If that is the cycle that we're going into of male and female, of yin and yang, of, of rising to a higher expression of consciousness, what is our specific 
role in this because it would be easy to say, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. So for myself, we were not going to go into detail, but two months ago, I got hit by a car. Last month, we had twins on board in my, my wife's belly. We now have a singleton on board. This is not just us. We are all experiencing, oh my God, what in the world is going on now? How do we see our role and to see through the heaviness, which to me is the electron about to blast forward to the next electron state? You've said it already, and I think uh, as you mentioned it, we might have talked before the program, the law of attraction. I would like to rename that. That's called creating your own reality. Now, if you've talked to Joe Dispenza, and I know you have, you're going to talk about the field. Uh, if you've talked to uh, Lynn McTaggart, we're talking about the field. That's the new buzzword. The field represents the energy of consciousness. Does consciousness, what people are thinking worldwide, have energy? Yes or no? There has been scientific proof. Yes, it does. Is it measurable? Yes, it is. You now have something that has energy and has consciousness. Bingo. It's physics. Are you ready for that? Okay. That means you're going to be able to have rules about it. You're going to be able to manipulate it. All these things. We've just started seeing this. Question. Can you tap into the field so that you would be able to do a left turn instead of a right turn when you should have turned left because what a right turn is going to have you hit by a car? You see what I'm saying? Can you create your reality and be in the right place at the right time? And the answer is absolutely yes. And that's part of also this new energy. Creating your new reality is being, again, in the right place at the right time through intuition. What do you do? I, we all practice this. Monica and I have been practicing this thing for years, and we have seen the most incredible results that, you, that we can't even tell you what we see. And when we traveled and all of that, being in the right place at the right time, catching the right planes, having uh, synchronicity that you just laugh at, it's so remarkable. And then you realize you're tapped into the field. It's there to be sensed. Are you ready? It's there to be sensed. So why not tap into it? How do you do it? What we do is we, first of all, expect it. Dear Spirit, let me be in the right place at the right time. Let me expect good things. And this then will attract them to me and me to them. And this isn't new cars and new homes. This is, this is health. This is um, being in a place where there's synchronicity. That's, you meet somebody and you need them. You meet the right doctor. Uh, it's, it's simple stuff, but it adds up and it happens again and again and again and again. And you realize uh, people look at you and go, wow, are you lucky? And you want to look at them and say, I'm not lucky at all. I, I, am, I am doing what we, were, we are here to do, <laughs> and that is to sense this field. Michael, I'm looking at you. I know you have done this. I know things have fallen in place for you. And I know that you look at this whole deal and know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, well, there's an exercise I did years ago, and it's interesting because we moved to a lake house. This is our last interview done from our mo rolling mobile recording studio. And then we moved to a lake house where we're going to be up until the birth. And then we'll see because we go with this flow, my wife and ourselves. We <laughs> at this point have so surrendered, we see where that flow takes us. Now, an exercise that I did years ago that now I can do to a whole new level at the lake house, because at the lake house, we've got a giant frozen lake in front of us with the center of it still has water. And so thousands of birds will come and fly and land right at the center. And then they'll all take off together, do some amazing formations, and then come back and land again, move around, and then again as one. And what I found is an exercise from sitting on the beach before is if you go quiet and you tune into the birds, you can actually feel your body start to pull you. You can do it with your eyes closed and imagine where the birds are going and then open up your eyes and find that you are moving in synchrony, in harmony with those birds because you're plugging into the field. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> what you both mentioned, and this is the change of the paradigm. So if we really want to talk about... I, I've got to interrupt. Monica, I'm going to apologize. She has never come to an interview before. For those who can't see, my kitty, the love bug, has never... We've had over 2,000 shows. 
She has never. She's come and put her tail before me for one or two times before an interview before. This is the first time she's ever had it been here. So whatever energy you guys ex- are exuding today is is beyond magnificent because she won't leave me alone and she keeps looking at you guys too. We well, love Wait till kitty. you see what the rooster does. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned to the end and we'll have Ruru on here. So go ahead, Monica. <laughs> Paradigm shift is that we are so conditioned that our answers are out here in every aspect of our lives. I'm sick. I go see the doctor. The answer is out here. I need spiritual help and advisors. You go to church and the answer is out here from someone else. So this is the paradigm shift where we are discovering the answer is no longer out here in the traditional way we thought. Now, Lee mentioned everything's in the field, but the way you get to the field is to go within. That is where the answers are going to be found to the solutions for your life, for the direction you need to take, for the people you need to meet, for the health you desire, all of those answers are within you. And when you get in touch with that vast knowledge that resides within you, then you're going to be able to connect in with the field and create the reality of the life you wish to have. And Lee already gave the answer. It is through intuition and Michael already shared with you an experience of going to his lake house and centering and being in the stillness we don't get these answers when you've got lots of stimulation and chatter and noise where does the answer come from it comes from your heart you have to get out of your mind and the way to get out of your mind is to be in the stillness And your heart talks to you in whispers and it will always give you the answer you need, always. It comes from your heart and it comes sometimes so fast you don't even know what that message was. And that's when you can ask yourself, what was that message again? Bring it to me. And earlier in the conversation we talked about when you asked, when is this going to be over? I remember crying saying, that's not the right question to ask. That's the wrong question to ask. The question you should always ask is, dear spirit, tell me what I need to know. When you surrender to not having to know how, when, if, what, where, when you surrender to having to know those answers and you ask the right question, the right question, tell me what it is that I need to know. There's a book behind me you can see, kind of a tiny little little thing because the, the physical copies other than that one have already moved over to the lake house. And this is a book on uh, called Awe, The Automatic Writing Experience, which over a period of years, uh, spirit wouldn't leave me alone until I wrote this thing and got it out there as a technology for people to help do exactly what you're describing. The first question in there that spirit makes me or or, or taught me that we get to ask spirit is what do I need to know today? (laughs) That's right. You know, there's also something else. And you um, ask a question we didn't answer. And that is, what do you how do we do this? Yeah. Uh, how do we spend the light? If you've ever flown on an airplane, most people have at least one time. You have the um, the safety briefing that the stewardess gives you, and she says, in case the masks drop down, put your mask on first, and then take care of those around you next to your children second. That is the principle. You take care of yourself. This is how we're going to do it. If you're having a dysfunctional family and you want to know what are you going to do about it and how are you going to survive it and all that, Take care of yourself first, and that is to say, start loving them more. Start loving yourself more. Everything changes. Everything changes. Your attitude changes. The paradigm of your life changes. How they see you changes, and you go, wow, what, what just happened? And you said, you took care of yourself. And that's, that is the answer. Do you feel we're 
upgraded versions of ourselves that have come through. And, and I remember your work, and I, I considered myself right on the cusp, right on the cutting edge of the Indigo children. And I actually wrote a book with Indigo Print called College Confidence with ADHD years ago to help students with what I called hyper-creative minds. Because I was, I was uh, the kid who pulled on the girl's hair, so to speak, in the sandbox, you know, in kindergarten and first grade studying molecules. But I wonder if, if we are upgraded versions where the news is coming fast and furious. We're bombarded with, quote, negativity. I'm putting in quotes because there is no good nor bad. It's, it's all part of the expansive process. But we're bombarded with this to keep us from silence. Because the old structures will fall away so quickly if we tap into silence and we are more capable or attuned, I wonder what Rumi would say about this, than ever to be able to plug in given half a moment of it. One of the most difficult things is to tell a young person to take the earbuds out for a while. <laughs> But they do, and this, uh, may I just say congratulations if you're, uh, you're under 35 and you're watching this, or under 30. Um, this is our new audience, folks. And yeah. every time we went out uh, for these past years and for the 15 or so that Monica and I have been traveling all the time, we have a demographic. and We know what our audience is, we know who they are, and that has all switched in the last two years. And now we're seeing young people on board starting to understand this and disconnecting and being silent. And then, you know, just going right back to what they love. You don't have to forego your music or your, or, or your Internet or, or any of the social media. You just have to have a time where you suspend and be silent. And they are. They're re they really understand. I never thought that you'd see the maturity that I really didn't expect in young people. It's always, you know, I'm from the Woodstock era where <laughs> we just wanted to, to uh, sing and make love. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're starting to see a lot more seriousness, a lot more maturity, and it's accurate. What do we do then? Is it a matter of, not that we want to go with step by step here, we go quiet, we plug back in, our light starts to rise up. Is there something we do? A lot of what this discussion has been about today is instead of us experiencing Armageddon, has been, we've been skirting around it, but, but, but it's all led to it, a time from the me to the we. Connection is the answer. So connecting in with yourself then leads you to realize that you're a unique expression from the unified field, but you are part of the unified field field and so is everything and everyone around you and you don't what you make as a decision for yourself ripples out and you are connected that is why you can influence others you mentioned we're transmitters yes because we have that ability to influence others and love and laughter are a bigger influencer than fear. So if you can be in a room with people and you have one person standing in the corner who's very fearful and doom and gloom and just wanting to talk about how bad everything is and in that same room, can you imagine being in there and you, your favorite comedian, whoever's that comedian, could be Robin Williams, it could be Eddie Murphy, it could be whoever is that comedian that just really gets you laughing. Which person in that room are you going to walk over to and be attracted to? Joy, laughter, dispel all the other fears and it creates a bubble that becomes infectious and then someone else gets into that bubble and their bubble gets bigger and then their bubble gets bigger and it ripples out because we're connected through being a community. When We're not an individual anymore. We are a community. And so really our role in all of this is yeah. to find the 
peace within ourselves, once mm -hmm. you can get into that state of peace, the inner child is so important. Joy is sacred. That's what crying has been teaching. Joy is sacred and your role is to sustain joy. Thank you. I'm looking at the, the roses there and the way I describe the field is actually a rose bush and that we are each individual expressions. We are all roses on one bush, but we each get to grow into our roseness, into our own unique beauty, our own unique nature, our own unique greatness. So Monica, with what you've said, it sounds like we need to get really serious and grow up to play, to joy, to doing the very things that we were told as kids or told as young adults that we shouldn't do because we need to get serious and we need to grow up. That's instead exactly what we need to do, isn't it? Krein has said that what, our what we perceive as good and bad for ourselves, for our family, for our society and everything else is going to shift. Now, so let me just give this uh, quickly and excuse the folks who have heard this already because I gave this on an election special. But uh, let me take you to um, a presidential election in the United States, let's say in uh, 30 years, okay? And so I want to ask you who you're going to vote for based upon what happens here. Okay, it's a debate, and we're all watching it on TV or wherever, and the one stands up and says, okay, my opponent here, you really ought to know about this because, uh, you know, when he was 14, here's what he did, and then he did it again when he was 23, and then did you know that this and that happened? And, and in other words, he, he, he slaughters him before he ever tells how bad his policies are and all like that, and so he's sitting there, you know, just slaughtering the other guy and making him so bad and all. So finally he sits down, his time's up, and he's feeling very confident that he's just wiped out his opponent. So his opponent gets up, and the first thing he does, he says, I would like to celebrate the life of this man. He is a patriot. He doesn't think like I do, but he really loves the United States. And here are some of the things that he's done in legislations that have stuck and that have really helped a lot of people. And then he goes on to build him up and tell all about what a nice patriot. He says, I am proud to have this patriot next to me, and I believe that you should vote for me because I think differently. And here's how, here's, here are the differences. And then he sits down. I'm going to ask you, which one are you going to vote for? I don't care what the party is. Do you want the guy who assassinates the other guy or the guy who's compassionate? And what Krina says, you're going to go for the compassion. You will even change parties because you'll start seeing something you really, really like. And that is different. What's, what's fascinating to me and what I hear is old guard, how do I put this, weakness. Until now, what you just described is someone we would define as weak. I'm going to put that in quotes. But now with the new gen, we have called them empaths. We have called them sensitive. They have even on not so good occasions been called too sensitive. Might even call them the open-hearted warrior. They are the ones who are dropping their shields, plugging into the intuition you're talking forward, and stepping forward from here. And that's the new game, isn't it? Some of the young corporate heads are starting now something called conscious capitalism. Yes. And that is, that is different. Take a look. Your corporations are not going to be the evil ones for long because they're going to start caring about their people. And, and that's already been done in some cases. And you, start, you, you saw it with Steve Jobs and some of the others who were just revolutionary in this thing. But now they're starting to look at it as a help. And, and it, it helps the corporation. It helps their sales. It helps their people. It's a win-win. Lee, Lee, what would you say is if we had Kryon on here right now, and, and you've channeled him so much, he is, and, and I'm using even he loosely because my assumption is on the other side, it's, it's with Jabber. Yes, they come through as one sex, you come through as one sex for a while, and then another sex for a while, and there's the transition period, which is so cool, and I recommend to everybody to go over your channel to hear about this. But with that said, What's the most important thing Cryon would want us to know at this time? Love yourself and tap in to what has always been for you, 
which is the love from the creative source, where everything has come from, including you, your soul, your life. And this is it's almost like the hand has always been outstretched for this. But it's only now that we're starting to understand that you can do it. You do not have a punishing God. You have a loving God. There is no such thing as you going to the other side and then having some kind of, of a torture or punishment forever, as you've been told, as thousands, millions have been told. You are born magnificent. You are here in your magnificence. So get on with understanding and don't fear the future. Woohoo! And Monica, what has struck you the most? I'm going to give you two questions at the moment. What has struck you the most about what Cryon's been saying, and what has shocked you? Very interesting question. What has struck me the most with Cryon's message is that we look at ourselves so focused on Earth, and let's face it, we are on Earth, but we have a whole galactic lineage that just blows my mind. It should blow the mind of everyone here on our planet. We have a galactic lineage. And Cryon tells us that this process that we're going through on Earth has been happening for millennia in the galaxy. And that those who were faced with this turning point, this decision point, made it beyond the shift and reached ascension status. Cryon says the snowball is rolling. It has happened on other planets and it is happening here. There is an actual physics of consciousness that just like a snowball that teeters off the edge of a cliff, mm -hmm. once it gets momentum, gravity pulls that snowball down. It's, it's going down. We are past that tipping point of moving into a higher consciousness. It is a given. It is a given. So you can just relax now knowing that it is a given that we have decided collectively to move into a higher consciousness. It is, it's the beginning point for us here now. Take, take heart in that. And then what was the second question? What, what has shocked you? And, and I'll just pause for one brief moment. We've had Stephen Greer on the show, famous UFOologist who talks about how higher level beings, you can say that on an evolutionary scale, there's a level one to 10 in, in how, how evolved a species are. And, and he, he, it, it rang a line from Kung Fu Panda when he said this. He said that, that uh, there is now a level zero, uh, <laughs> which is or was humanity because we're coming out of the dark age, ages. We're going up, up, up. And I do believe there is no stopping us. So the second part of the question, Monica, is what has shocked you about Cryon's teachings? <laughs> well, Monica was a park ranger in Australia for 15 years and just thought uh, humanity was uh, <laughs> god-awful and, and, and what it was doing to the earth. Then she started reading Cryon and said that, that... I did a 180. Just the opposite, so yeah. <laughs> prior to my awakening, it's true, I was national park ranger in Australia, a little bit in New Zealand, and so many environmental problems... And the cause of it all was those naughty humans. Those naughty humans are doing terrible things to the earth and pollution and so the answer uh, was endangered to get rid of species. Humans. The answer was get rid of humans. <laughs> but understanding that the planet is actually a living sentient being mm -hmm. in support mm -hmm. of our decisions and cooperates with our decisions Completely, I did a 180 that the um, reason for Gaia to even be here with sentience is because of consciousness in humans and their discovery of the God within. 
That's what shocked me is that we are so profoundly connected in ways we can't even imagine. So don't make it, make yeah. no mistakes. We still uh, don't like what humans are doing to the planet. It's just yeah, that it just only got... <laughs> because it hurts us. Yeah. yeah. So, but it became the Earth became a partner that she didn't expect, a loving, sentient being, yeah. and is here for us. Yeah. So that begets a, a last few questions here, and, and and then we'll go into a meditation. I'll bring out Rue, and then we'll go into a meditation, which is. Mm, that means am I going to go there? Yeah, I'm going to go there. Australia, I believe it was a year and a half ago, may have been two years ago, and the koalas and the fires. How do we see that and recognize, so I'm going to cry now, it means we've hit a truth, recognize there is something more at play. We could extend that to not just be to Australia and the koalas, there are natural events happening all over the planet, fires, floods. We're in this RV because of fires coming to our door, second time, and we had to leave. And so there is this tendency for some to think our planet is in retaliation against us. We're being punished because we're naughty, naughty humans. That sounds like old school religion, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And yet we have an alliance with the planet. We, sh we are sharing our experiences with the planet. And if we can separate ourselves from the, the drama of what is unfolding and look at everything from cycles and that everything has its purpose and reason and even through fire there is regeneration that comes after it even with floods there is a regeneration that comes after it even with hurricanes, the destruction, that's also part of creation. So if we try and look at everything in terms of having a cycle of destruction and creation, how does that feel for you when I say that? Well, having lived on Maui and so being very familiar with Pele, which is God or goddess of fire, and also a destruction to bring new earth. <laughs> that makes a lot of perfect sense if we let go of judgment. doesn't mean we don't take action, because I think right action from the heart is a great thing to do, but without attachment to the story. Because that's, the, to me, the heaviness that we're feeling right now is attachment to story, attachment to old, and not letting go for the new birth that is already taking place. So with that said, one last question, then I want to know where people can go, and then I've got a wrap-up question, and we'll, we'll dive into things here. Um, and so this is for either of you. You, 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 you dropped a bomb on us, Monica. You said, and I think you said S, but either way is fine. The goddess within. Who, or, and what are we? Well, I can tell you what we're not. I am not my mind. I'm not my body. I'm not my emotions. These are all just a container for allowing the flow of infinite energy from the creative source that is eternal. Now that is something mystics have been trying to figure out for years, the puzzle of how you can have an energy that had no beginning and no end but essentially that is who we are 
We are an eternal spark that has no beginning and no end and we are simply here as an expression in a moment in time and what we are collectively doing with our expressions as we discover that truth has an explosive effect in the universe that we can't even comprehend what it is doing. But that's in a nutshell. We are eternal source. Right. They're playing with on this planet and kind of scares me. I'll put it in quotes a little bit, but they're playing with fusion energy to create suns here on Earth. And it just occurred to me, I mean, I know this, but playing with that concept of fusion, what you're describing is we are each, and that terminology got a little bit confused maybe a couple thousand years ago, we are all each an individual sun here on Earth. Definitely. We're, we're having a unique expression, but this is just a container. And when we're not here, we're back into the meld of multidimensional soup of souls. Who are we? We are a society that is starting to learn that our priests, mm -hmm. our shamans, mm -hmm. our shah women, whatever you want to call it, should be women. And they always should have been women. Mm -hmm. Women have the best intuition, they care for kids, they have the sixth sense, they have all the things. I, you know, um, Klein has said this over and over. This is another big paradigm shift. There'll be a big aha when they start, start realizing this. You know, another metaphor, um, not a metaphor, a story. You have the uh, guy who's, uh, who is on the battlefield, and he's just gone through a horrific battle, and he's uh, bleeding out, and he's, he's, he's looking at his last breath. Who does he call for, mom or dad? <laughs> Do you, you know what he's thinking of. And he's calling for his mother. And that is a very telling thing. And that is the one that I would like to see if I'm in trouble. Or I would like to go to who's the head of my church. And, or I'd like to, to see when I go um, to get advice. And I think that is one of the biggest paradigm shifts that's coming. And, so, and I know it's not exactly the answer to your question, but I had to get it in there somewhere. That's it. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you guys. And, and if people want to love each other, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Period. Done deal. End of story. Woohoo. We all win. <laughs> On that note, where can people go to find your beautiful work, both of you, and to find channel teachings and to find out more? One is cryon.com. And if you really want to um, see a lot of things, we have a a site that you can get to, um, cryon.com slash free audio. Hundreds and hundreds of hours over many, many years of Cryon's channelings, audio only, completely and totally, absolutely free, no email required. Um, download them all. So that's one place. If you want to see where we're going to be and uh, about our shows, it's cryonmasters.com. Fantastic. And before we go into, I think I am going to bring, if it's all right with you, I'll bring out Rue before the meditation. I'm going to let him join me in the meditation. Any last words of wisdom that either or both of you want to share? What people are looking at right now is a part of this new energy, and it's Michael online. These kinds of programs might never have been tolerated even 10 years ago. We are seeing an opening up of people's minds with so many odd things that we made fun of before. I'm an engineer, and this happened to me when I was 43 years old. And I'll tell you, it took a lot for me to cross over into the woo-woo. And now I understand that that woo-woo is not woo-woo. Where I was was dysfunctional. Where I am is exactly <laughs> where I should be. So it's about perception. And Michael, with your program and all that you're doing here and the, and the work that goes into it, it's changing the planet. Thank you. And I'm going to say you weren't woo-hoo, woo-woo, but you are woo-hoo. <laughs> oh, beautiful. And I want to just conclude that by 
take, taking care of yourself first, the honor of your journey is passed on to others in the most amazing, synchronous ways. And how do you take care of yourself first? What am I talking about is how much love can you pour onto yourself and accept Allow yourself permission, give yourself permission to try and experience as much love as you can possibly hold because that spills out to others. And remember, you are deeply connected to others. So that's a dual purpose where you can be to service for others by loving yourself as much as you can possibly hold and spilling that out and sharing that with others. That's what it's about. I hope this comes across well, but now I understand why you guys are such a rock and amazing team together. And Monica, you are bringing that balance. You are bringing that divine, nurturing, loving side. You've got that going on too, Lee. But you guys are amazing, and I cannot thank you enough for your work as the superhero dynamic duo that you are. So let me go get Rue on that note, and then I'll introduce you, and then we'll go into a little meditation, and uh, we'll see how he does being woken up from his nap to being on show. But he does love being on camera. Not sure what the love bug's going to do. This is She's still right beneath me, or right beneath the camera. This is never, ever happened before <laughs> it is so cool so bear with me one second we'll we'll you know wander back and grab rue here and then the hardest part will be putting the headphones on with one hand and a rooster in my arms hold on here he loves being on camera and and so during the daytime if we have him up on his perch He'll be singing because that's his high spot behind me, uh, uh, up on the couch. That's that's his at night. But when I do my evening shows and my live events, he sits up right behind me. He'll come. So the live events start like on YouTube live event starts at 830. And so around eight o'clock, he will go and hop up there and face the camera and just wait. <laughs> And he knows exactly what it is, don't you? So we had an animal communicator. We've had many of them on the show, but we had one on a few years ago after I just had a meeting with some Hollywood, beautiful Hollywood folks and producers wanting to make a, a TV show or look into a pilot with Jessica and myself. And they had just driven off. And then we spoke with the animal communicator. And the animal communicator said, uh, Rue knows who was just there. And he's so happy they just visited because you're going to be making a new show and I'm the star. <laughs> he's the star. <laughs> and he said it right through the, the, uh, uh, the um, animal communicator who had no idea who was visiting. And here's Rue saying, I'm going to be the star. I know it. <laughs> so normally, I begin to have a meditation by inviting people to close their eyes but I actually feel that if there is the ability to be seeing this interview with the video feed to actually keep your eyes open and if you're not seeing this I want to just describe the most extraordinary creature that is called Ruru, who has beautiful, soft feathers of a mottled black and white, and with the most prominent red crown, mane, which this bird is so proud of, because he is a very, very handsome bird. There is a presence within every animal that walks on the planet. And that animal's presence says, I know you. I know your name. Every footstep that you take on the planet leaves an imprint within 
Gaia. And so I want to ask you to feel that connection with that magnificent animal named Ruru that is pure, unconditional love and it can see your consciousness. It can sense the I am presence that is within you. And as you tune into that field of connecting in with that unconditional love emanating from one of Gaia's creatures, feel that wave beaming into the earth and depositing onto a crystalline grid. And now feel that wave of gratitude and appreciation begin to amplify. And it's coming back into your field. And then we can send that appreciation and gratitude back to that beautiful creature known as Ruru. We send back that wave of gratitude, respect, appreciation, and thanks for allowing us to have this connection. And so there's nothing more to do, simply just bathing in that shower of appreciation. You are so appreciated. And so we give a thanks to Gaia. We give a thanks to Cryon. We give thanks to Ruru. And I give a big thanks to both of you. This has been beautiful. I know, Ru. I know. <laughs> so for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler, I guess, and Ruru Sandler too, <laughs> saying, be well, have fun, get Cry On, Lee Carroll, check out their websites, check out Monica, check out everything they have to offer, and check out the God or Goddess within you today and above and beyond all else shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs> what a beautiful, special interview that was certainly all heart, all love. I don't know if I can reach in here with you. Yes, this interview was all heart, all love with Monica and uh, Lee Carroll and, and the uh, channeling or, or the words of Cryon. What a beautiful interview. And on that note, if you want to co connect with this energy, if you want to connect with spirit as well, get all oh, the automatic writing experience or get yourself a rooster. All oh, might be a little bit easier. Oh, I love your room. But get all oh, the automatic writing experience or learn it live with me. You can go to automaticwriting.com where I have live monthly classes the easiest fastest way to learn how to channel that's at automaticwriting.com and if you want to learn how to be the mystic that you are and that's what we were talking about in this show today we were talking about becoming a modern mystic which is already inside of you then join our school of mystics you can find it at inspirenationuniversity.com scroll down a little bit you'll find our school of mystics for four wednesdays a month we get together with your homies, like-minded people, what we're going to call your spiritual family and myself, and help you remember the, the mystic that you always were and the mystic that you were meant to be. That's at inspirenationuniversity.com. We've also got the join button down below if you want to become a member of the Mystic Circle. Lots of behind the scenes videos, fun information, and of course, time with Rue and myself. I love the behind the scenes goodness and getting to share with you guys. That's quickly that join link down below. 
We're also a podcast, which you may not have known, which means you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us in just about every place that you would ingest your podcast. So you can listen on the road. You can listen on the treadmill, on your bike, wherever that may be, as long as it's safe, of course. And so look us up, Inspire Nation Show, at your favorite podcast. On that note, big thumbs up if you like this. Be sure to click. Wow, we've got live shows every Monday night. So click on the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of my upcoming shows with me, plus live Q&A every Monday night. Here's the link for the next amazing show. Be sure to share this with your loved ones and everyone you know so we can help raise consciousness and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! Right, Rue? All right. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>